Hey hi welcome back so in this section we are going to do the soldering of our hardware okay and in this specific lecture we are going to do the soldering of all the components all the smd components which are present on the hardware and in next lecture in next lecture i will show you how to do the soldering of all the through hole components which are present on this hardware okay so let's start with the soldering process now so first of all we are going to start with this ic which is atmega 328p okay and this particular ic has got a package of lqfp32 and always remember whenever you solder this kind of package what you have to do you have to solder the two opposite pads or the two diagonal pads of the ic and that actually it's going to fix the ic on its position on the pcb and once you are done with that later you can solder rest of the pads of the ic okay so it doesn't matter what kind of lqfp package it is when whenever it comes to soldering the lqfp package first of all you have to fix the ic okay which you can do by soldering the two opposite pads or the diagonal pads and uh, once you are done with that then you can start with the soldering of rest of the pins of the ic okay um now here the liquid that i am using uh, it is called as liquid flux okay and we generally use this liquid flux uh, during the soldering process it's because while doing the soldering process you know the solder will actually stick uh, to the soldering iron the tip of the soldering iron and we actually don't want that to happen because if that happens then the thread of uh, you know the threads will form along with that the bridges will form between the two legs of the ic and uh, in order to separate out those bridges or in order to avoid the sticking of solder to the uh, tip of soldering iron we actually use liquid flux now uh, instead of using liquid flux you can also use solid flux okay which you can see uh, in this video in yellow color so that solid flux is actually cheaper compared to liquid flux so you can also use the solid flux uh, to while doing the soldering process it's just that uh, in my case i don't have the isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean the pcb um because you know when you use a solid flux at that time lot of mess is going to happen on the pcb okay and you know there will be lot of stickiness on the pcb and in order to clean that stickiness we actually use isopropyl alcohol to clean the pcb but while soldering this particular hardware i didn't have the isopropyl alcohol that's the reason i was using the liquid flux to do the soldering of this um ic or uh, this particular hardware okay because of that uh, i'm going to avoid the mess on the pcb and the pcb will be much more clean and tidy uh now here you just observe how i am soldering the pins of this ic what you have to do you just have to take a little solder on the tip of the soldering iron and later you just have to wipe that tip from the side of all the pins of this ic and then automatically all the pins will get soldered in very neat and tidy manner um all right so till this point we are almost done with the soldering of atmega 328 ic uh on some of the pins of this ic uh still there are some bridges so i will remove those bridges later okay by using a solder wick or copper wick and uh, if you see here now i am actually cleaning the pins of this ic and for that i am using liquid flux generally we use isopropyl alcohol to clean uh, the pins of the ic or to clean the pcb uh, 
बट आई डोंट हैव दैट आई सो प्रोपाइल अल्कोहल एट दिस मोमेंट दैट इज द रीजन आई यूज सोल्ड ऑफ लक्स टू क्लीन दी आई सी ओके All right, so we are done with the soldering of Atmega 328 IC now, and uh, now let's solder the decoupling capacitors of uh, Atmega 328 IC, which is basically 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Okay, and uh, C9 and C10 are basically 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor, and C11 it's basically 22 microfarad capacitor, we, uh, which you already know. Okay, so let's do the soldering of these capacitors now. Um, all right so now let's solder the C15 capacitor uh, which is basically the decoupling capacitor for analog VCC pin of this IC so let's solder that capacitor now um all right so we are done with the C15 capacitor which was the decoupling capacitor for a VCC pin Now let's solder the capacitor for reset pin, which is basically zero point one microfarad capacitor, which is present on the reset pin, which is C fourteen. Um, now here, uh, while soldering this particular switch, uh, which is user input switch SW1, while soldering this switch, I did one mistake. Always remember, whenever you solder the SMD components, first of all, you have to do uh, you have to do the soldering of smaller components like resistor and capacitor. Now here, actually, I am doing the soldering of this particular switch because of that. What will happen, you know? the resistors and capacitor which are present around this particular switch while soldering those resistors and capacitor i am going to face lot of problem okay which you will actually observe uh, when i will do the soldering of resistor and capacitor so always remember whenever you do the soldering manually first of all you have to do the soldering of uh, smaller components like resistor capacitor inductor or if there are some other components like uh smd ic's first of all you have to solder those components and once you are done with that then only you have to solder the heighted components or the bigger components like uh, this smd switch okay now here uh, while soldering the resistors and capacitor of this user input switch i didn't face much problem but while soldering the um, resistors and capacitor of reset switch i faced lot of problem okay which you will observe in the video 
सो ऑलवेज कीप इन माइंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू डू द सोल्डरिंग ऑफ स्मॉलर कंपोनेंट्स एंड देन ओनली यू हैव टू डू द सोल्डरिंग ऑफ बिगर कंपोनेंट्स एंड दैट इज द रीजन यू नो वाई वी सोल्डर द एस एम डी कंपोनेंट्स फर्स्ट एंड लेटर वी सोल्डर द थ्रू ऑल कंपोनेंट्स बिकॉज जनरली द थ्रू ऑल कंपोनेंट्स आर बिगर कंपेयर टू एस एम डी कंपोनेंट्स सो इफ वी सोल्डर द थ्रू ऑल कंपोनेंट्स फर्स्ट देन यू नो दो थ्रू ऑल कंपोनेंट्स आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट लॉर्ड ऑफ बैरियर वाइल डूइंग द सोल्डरिंग ऑफ एस एम डी कंपोनेंट्स दैट इज द रीजन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी ऑलवेज सोल्डर द एस एम डी कंपोनेंट्स एंड वंस वी आर डन विद द सोल्डरिंग ऑफ ऑल द एस एम डी कंपोनेंट्स ओनली देन वी सोल्डर द थ्रू ऑल कंपोनेंट्स ओके सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट दैट विल एक्चुअली मेक यूर लाइफ इजी अदरवाइज यू विल फेस लॉर्ड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम एंड थ्रू दिस कोर्स my purpose is to teach you all these points okay these small small points actually actually gives lot of pain in the real life so always remember these points Uh, all right so now let's do the soldering of all the pull down resistor of seven segment display driver ic okay uh, prior to that let's solder this zero ohm resistor which i actually uh, for the miso and mosi pin which we have used uh, to control this driver ic okay so once we are done with this uh, so soldering of this zero ohm resistor later we will solder all the pull down resistors of this seven segment display driver okay All right so we are done with the soldering of all the pull down resistors of a uh, seven segment display driver ic and now it's time to solder all the current limiting resistors which are used uh, to limit the current which is flowing towards the seven segment display okay so let's solder these all current limiting resistors now mm -hmm. 
Alright, so now let's start with the soldering of RGB LED. And always remember, whenever you use any type of RGB LED, uh, it's going to have the polarity. Okay. So while soldering the RGB LED, you have to check which uh, which pin is the pin number one, and accordingly you have to match that particular pin with the notch of the RGB LED. Okay. You can see here there is actually a one white dot on the PCB, uh, which actually represents the pin number one of RGB LED. And you just have to match the pin number one of RGB LED with that white dot and uh, then everything will be fine. Okay. So let's solder the RGB LED and its current limiting resistors now. Alright, so we are now done with the soldering of RGB LED. Now it's time to solder the decoupling capacitors or the local capacitors of 7 segment display driver IC. Okay, so let's solder this 0.1 microfarad capacitor and 10 microfarad capacitor. Alright, so now let's start with the soldering of 7805 IC. Uh, this IC is actually not uh, symmetric, so you don't have to bother about the polarity in this case. Straight away, you can put this particular IC on the PCB and you can start with the soldering of this IC and the components which are connected around it. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we are done with the soldering of uh, the current limiting resistor of LED D2 whose value was 2 kilo ohms. Now it's time to solder the LED. Okay, but the question comes which terminal is anode and which terminal is cathode. So in this uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to identify which one is anode and which one is cathode because we know that we should connect anode terminal to the positive rail okay plus 5 volt and cathode should be connected to the ground okay so here i am going to show you how how with the help of multimeter we can actually identify which one is cathode terminal and which one is anode terminal so you have to put the multimeter in continuity mode and you need to connect the black terminal of the multimeter to the cathode and uh, red terminal to of the multimeter to the anode so you can randomly connect uh, these two terminal um, to the led and if led is glowing it means that the red terminal part is anode and the black terminal part is actually the cathode okay so here uh, the left hand side terminal is actually the cathode okay and the right hand side terminal of the led it's basically the anode okay and you can observe on the led the left hand part okay now um i have actually altered the polarity so left hand part is actually bigger and uh, on the led and the right hand part is actually the smaller okay so the smaller part is anode and the bigger part is cathode so this is how basically you need to identify which one is anode and which one is cathode in case of led by putting the multimeter in continuity mode Uh, now here, I actually forgot to tell you one important thing about the LED marking. 
okay if you flip the led you will you will see that there is actually a marking on the bottom side okay and it's actually the t marking so the line which is pointing towards the terminal it's basically the cathode terminal okay so you can see on the left hand side it's basically the cathode okay uh, so t t uh, t line is actually pointing towards that terminal so that is actually cathode and the opposite terminal obviously it will be anode okay so that's actually another trick to identify which one is cathode and which one is anode and accordingly you can place the led on the pcb all right so let's do the soldering of led now Alright, so we are done with the soldering of decoupling capacitors of the power supply IC. Now let's solder the SS34 diode, which is actually the polarity protection diode of our power supply. So let's solder this diode now. Okay. Now here again there will be polarity in the diode. So the lines, the four lines which you can see on the top side of the diode, that actually indicates the cathode terminal of the diode. Okay. and the opposite terminal obviously it's going to be the anode terminal so always remember there will be some marking on the top side of the diode and based on those marking uh, you have to identify that uh, it's going to be the cathode terminal of the diode and the opposite terminal will be the anode terminal okay so accordingly you have to place the diode on the pcb and again on the footprint on the footprint or on the silk screen of the diode if you see we have given one bar uh, which actually represents that it's basically the cathode terminal of the uh, of the diode and the, you have to just match the marking which are present on top side of the diode with the marking silk screen marking which we have provided for the diode okay so you don't have to do mistake in this case All right so we are done with the soldering of short key diode now it's time to solder the decoupling capacitors or the local capacitors of the motor driver IC so let's solder these decoupling capacitors now um okay so we are almost done with the soldering of all the smd components which are present on the hardware okay now we are just left with the uh, power supply jack okay dc female jack so let's solder this power supply jack now 